We're getting two frames. So Anthony Lavery Spar here is going to bowl leadoff, which means he'll bowl the first and sixth frames for LAX. And we will begin with them on the left lane. You know, the only thing I could think of when you were going through the format was holy roll off. I looks real intense tonight. Very focused. Stiff night. You win the second game, you win two nothing. You won a round. You got to win two rounds, and it gets more complicated after that. And Buttriff will get a tap. The no tap tournament ended. <laughs> well, he's playing pretty deep too. He's almost in the third arrow. And watch this pit action here. Off the side wall. A little nosedive into the ankle of the three pin. What kind of shape will he give us tonight? Dave, take a look at this motion here. Now, no one has thrown more strikes than Wes Malad. You notice these are no spares. A couple of those open frames were little touch-ups in the 10th frames when things were decided. So he, too, has been utterly brilliant. That's his 10th strike. Wes Malad. Remember last time up for Kyle, he left that ugly nine pin. Not this time. This time, it's personal. That ball went through the pins and created a black hole in the pit. Uh, I may have looked at this guy right here or Belmonte, but it would have all been predicated on how practice went. Right. Yeah, we talked him up in the beginning of the show. We had that highlight package, and now it's back-to-back -back ring tens for Stu. Well. Now, well. <laughs> here's the guy to set up the 10th frame for your team. and. I mean, it's like, who do you give the ball to with two minutes to go in the game? Well, you could give it to the founder of LAX, Chris Paul. That wouldn't be a terrible decision. However, in this case, I think Belmo, as far as bowling goes, yeah. Take a look at his last shot there to the right of your screen. That was an absolute mirror image of the first shot thrown. He missed inside down lane at 45 feet. Now, Chris Paul, the founder of LAX, of course, he's an avid bowler and probably watching from wherever he may be at the moment. Ooh, a little kiss on that seven. A little late kick, and now no matter what LAX does in the 10th frame, they cannot shut out the Lumberjacks. Max score 238 for Dick Allen and his squad. 249 for Portland. That's about a half a dozen ringers. Plus, I think we had a ringing seven, did we not? Uh, let's see. One, two, three, four, five, ten pins, a seven pin, and a nine pin. Every ball has been in the pocket this game, except for the trip three from Jacob Butcher. Right. And again, Dick Allen missed a 10 pin. He did this last night in the 10th frame, and it didn't cost LAX. They ended up winning the game. Now I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that Mitch Hoope hits the pocket on this shot because he knows exactly the move to make off of what Kyle Troop did. Okay, and I'm wrong. Yeah, he was a little light, and for the third time in this competition, we have seen that leave. Chris Barnes left it in a Big situation where he needed a strike to win. Tommy Jones left that last night in the roll-off, and now Mitch leaves it here. Come on, make it happen here. Let's go. Going for it. Missed it. Not even close. I'm going to go with youth in this battle. Need a strike badly. Oh! Tackle. Little mixer. And he's got to be cognizant of not having overbounce off the friction down lane. Thanks, Tim. Elbow. You know, it just looks like that ball should have a turn signal on it, right? 
Back we go to the top of the order and Kyle Troop in game two with Portland up 1-0. Big shot here. Right back in it. Oh, this is double picker. No. No, it's an autographed pick. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> Anthony Lavery Spar, not a candidate, but he's cool with it. <laughs> that message oh, here, no, never going to get there. Twin brother Sean also bowls on the PBA tour. Hang on. That's a, that's a huge mistake. And now Prather, ball change for him. Oh, is he overdue for something other than a ringing 10? Be a good time to strike right here. Finally, finally. Ball change successful. Remember, they open the first and second frames, Dave. 224 for Portland. Jason, one of three guys you'd have to consider for that Chris Shankle Award for PBA Player of the Year. That ball should come with a tour guide. <laughs> he turned his back on it about five feet before the ball hit the pocket. If Portland wins this, they will be halfway to the title. Oh, goodness. Collision, and then down goes Frazier. I've never known you to be wrong. And I know Lavery Spar, though, on that problematic left lane. Thank you, Andrew. The troop is on fire. Look at the rev rate, a blistering 539. I think Tim Mack is counseling him on another ball change. By... And here's Stu. There you go, he's back. Finally, Stu catches a hit. Come on. He just got a little too steep in the front of the lane. So we're going to go back to that ball. This one and the Fox Sports app as we watch the angle. And the strike. You see how much straighter that is? Yes. And Chris can play anywhere he wants. He can do anything to a bowling ball. And I'd rather see him do that. Something in his mind is telling him that's not the way to play it for him. They can still win the second game, win the round, and then win. We can have two roll-offs here is what I'm trying to tell you. And Hufe oh, no. has just given them a big aid. They counsel him to go for the count, so he'll try to take out the 2A he did. All right, what does Belmo have to do here? Well, Belmo has to strike out to force Wes Malott to get the first strike and count in the 10th frame. Oh, there's, there's a break, finally, for LAX. There was stuff flying everywhere in the pit. And they didn't double again. Any mark will do. Now well, West Malott's been in this position a bunch of times. You need a mark at eight to knock down game one and put Portland on the precipice of their first Elias Cup. That's a mark. Now, Mitch Poupe's last go-round on the right lane didn't go well. He left the 2 8 10 That's how you come back. And that's how you stack two strikes together. Simonelli gets him off to the good start. Kyle Troop now bowling in the fourth position for the first time in this Elias Cup 2019 version. Well, they got this lane figured out. And with the Lumberjacks having the first four strikes in this match, when they've needed him, the Big Nasty has been there. Yeah! 
what if, what if they close this thing out in style? Yeah. So Ryan Simonelli was moved by Tim Mack to the leadoff spot for this game on the left lane. Ryan's had a spectacular evening tonight. Been solid throughout. Now the 300 is over. Must strike situation here for Anthony Lavery Spar. Nope. Nope. It's been that way. It's what 15 10 pins now? Yep. For LAX just yeah. tonight. It, it, it's it's gross. It's not official, Randy, but if I had a vote, this guy has to be the MVP. He did it again. And you can take the Elias Cup on a parade down four streets. And there is Charlie Mitchell, the proprietor here at Bopo, Bo Portland. The hometown team has done it. The first title for the Portland Lumberjacks. They began their life as the Pittsburgh franchise. And then the love in Portland was so strong that the team was renamed the Portland Lumberjacks, and they finally have the title. How good was he? Utterly magnificent. I mean, I, I've, I've got to believe he's going to be the MVP. He's my MVP vote. Yeah. yeah. Did everything he had to do and just was so good in the tent. Well, he was the perfect anchor man. Yeah. I mean, we saw others do very well. Tommy Jones did with Dallas, but this guy was. And, and wasn't it interesting that night one, he anchors game one, and then they go over to the, to the, the left lane? Yep. And they move him out of the anchor position? Yeah, they moved Ryan Simonelli in. For and one game. For one game. And that was all she wrote. Yeah. yeah, baby! <laughs> <laughs> well, Jason Belmonte couldn't even make everything go down for him today. That was just brutal. More 10 pins left. I mean, that's the story for LAX. Watching the top player in the world have to shoot a 10 pin. It's over. Really feel bad for Stu Williams and Del Monte and the rest of their team. They caught zero breaks tonight. It's it was all Portland all night long. performance. Timmy, you brought it home, man. You brought it home. You got the Tim Mack is hoisting that trophy. He's passing around. Tim, it's been seven years that you've been manager. This Portland town is showing you love and how much they appreciate it. You guys finally have it. Put this night into words. Amazing moment. I can't be more proud of my guys. Just in a surreal moment that we're experiencing right now. Charlie Mitchell, Bayside Bowl. Everybody here in Portland has been so fantastic. We finally able to bring home the championship to Portland that they so much desire. I can't thank some, so many people to thank. Go Bowling, Fox Sports, you guys are awesome. Oh my God, what a moment. We love it. You guys put on an amazing show tonight, but right now, I, I'd like to start out with giving that MVP. Would you please do the honors, Mark Rob? Uh, hometown favorite team, Lumberjacks, goes to strike a lot, My West Milan. 2019 MVP, Mark Roth. Wes, you worked hard for this. You worked very hard for this and came through with your team. How much does it mean to you that you're walking away with this MVP tonight? Well, it took a team to get this right here. And before the match started, the man Mark to go get it done. When the man says get something done, 
you got to get it done. And I'm glad we were able to do it for Portland, and these guys have supported us all the way through, and I'm glad to finally bring it home to them. Congratulations to you guys. Go out and celebrate Portland. It's not like Portland needs a reason to have a party. <laughs> they really don't, especially not this building. But yeah, they're going to have a party tonight.